In today's video, we're going to be doing some home development of black and white film using the stand development process with Ilfotec DDX. I don't really know what I'm doing. So I've made my first mistake. <laughs> well, this weather is appalling. I've got no idea how to use these. And we can't even see what we're doing. <laughs> so the moment of truth. How's the film worked? How's the development worked? Do we have any images on this film? <laughs> This is the first time I've done this. Will I be able to develop this film correctly or not? Well, let's find out. Well, I've got some new goodies. It's been locked down in New Zealand for the last three weeks, which has been quite frustrating for me because I haven't been able to get any film developed. Um, and I've used that as an opportunity to start developing some film. You know, one of the biggest comments that I've had on my channel and other social media platforms is that, Stephen, you must start developing your own black and white film. And I was recently having uh, some conversation with my good friend, Martin Bremk from Germany. Apologies, Martin, I've just butchered your surname there. I think it's Brent. Um, but yeah, he, he gave me some encouragement and he gave me lots and lots of advice uh, for shooting, uh, for developing film, black and white film. So with um, New Zealand being in lockdown and my film lab, PCL Imaging in Auckland, um, they're in level four still, which means they can't work, they can't produce and develop film. Um, so I, I see it as a risk to the channel, you know, while we're still dealing with this COVID and there's these you know, lockdowns happening. I can't get my film developed. So I went out and I bought some film developing supplies. And today's video is about how to start developing black and white film at home for the first time. So what did I buy? Well, there are lots and lots of options for the black and white film developer. And, but there's not that many options in New Zealand probably because of the COVID and the disruptions that's having on importing materials into New Zealand. So there were some limited options and I had lots of conversation with Martin about this. Um, but in the end, I, I decided to go for Ilford uh, DDX. And the reason that I went for that film is because I was reading a blog online. I did some research on my own and I came across this website called On Film Only. Um, and it had this great article about stand development using Ilfotec DDX and Froma Pan 400. And I'll leave a link to this website uh, in the show notes uh, description down below of this video. And I was just blown away with the images. Um, and on this, in this article, it talks about stand development. And, you know, if you put in your developer in your tank and you don't turn it often and you just let it stand. And he did it for 45 minutes. And he's saying the um, contrast is far more pleasing and the sharpness is far more pleasing. So I'm going to give this a go. Um, I had a chip, bit of a chat with Martin about this and he gave me some tips as well about doing a two minute wash with water um, after the developer before we do the, do the stop bath. So yeah, we're going to have a go at developing some film. I've got some Kodak Tri-X 400. Um, I haven't loaded a film canister before. I haven't developed film before, so I'm going into this mostly blind. I've got some tips. Um, I've downloaded an app called a Massive Dev Chart, so I'm going to refer to that as well, although I'm not sure how helpful it would be with the stand development process, but we'll look at it anyway. Well, this weather's not looking good. So I think what we're going to have to do is go out and mind me a six camera with my 150 millimeter lens. And we're going to shoot the film at ISO 400. And I'm just going to drive around locally where I live and try and find some shots that I like. And if I have to, I can shoot through my car window with the window open so I don't get too wet. And we'll just see what we find. If the, if the weather turns, turns, then we'll um, get out and maybe walk around and see what else we can find. 
So I think what we'll do while we're waiting for this weather to clear, we'll fill these water jugs up with some water. Now I'm just going to use my tap water here and as I said before, when we built this house we installed two 45,000 litre water tanks, which means that we're not um, using water off a town supply, it's not coming from a water processing plant, it doesn't have chlorine in it, it doesn't have fluoride in it, it is purely water from the rain that falls on my roof and that makes its way into my tanks. Um, maybe there could be some leaching from the concrete into the water, but there are some filters that sit between the tap and the tank, so the water's filtered anyway. So it is probably as pure as it can get for water. Um, so I'm going to fill these up with water now, and we'll fill them up to, um, I don't know, we'll just fill them up over halfway. I haven't yet figured out how much water I need. Um, the reason why I'm doing this now is because I want all the air bubbles to get out of the water and also I need to bring the water up to room temperature um, and in this house we have a controlled heating system through a, an air system and that's set to 22 degrees so the, the theory is fill these up before I go out and I go out and shoot some film and when I get back there'll be no air bubbles in the water and hopefully the water will be about 20 to 22 degrees so we'll fill them up and then We'll go out and shoot some film. Just going to give a bit of a tap to encourage the water bubbles to come out of the water. So the other thing we're going to do right away, we're going to set up our film for the test of loading the film reels. So I've got some Kronach tracks for under here. It's a shame I have to waste it, but I think I'm going to have to do it anyway. Um, I'm just going to Unpack, unpack it, and then, and then I'm going to load it into my Mamiya 6 camera. This is a, a medium format film, by the way. So basically I've just loaded it into the back of the camera and I'm just going to wind it all the way across. And the theory is that I'll have a roll of film that appears to be have you know been used, it's been fully wounded. So when I unpack it, it will unpack the same way as a real film that's been fully exposed. And that's it, we've got a roll of film that's never been exposed, it's been fully wasted. I'm going to seal it up. And then before we actually load the roll of film that I'm actually going to expose while I'm outside of the changing bag, while I'm, when I'm not in the changing bag, I mean, I will load this and I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to write on it so I don't get the two mixed up. We're just going to write a test on here on the, on the notes. There we go, so I've got it marked as a test roll and then we will test out how to load the film into a Patterson tank and, and reel holder when we get back from shooting some film. Well the weather's stopped raining now so I think now is a great opportunity to get out there and shoot some film, so let's do that. So I've been my first mistake. <laughs> if you're going to deviate from your traditional kind of long glass mercury type thermometer and you go for a digital one, make sure you check the temperature range <laughs> because that baby one I purchased, the lowest temperature it would go was 30 degrees C and I need to go down to 20 degrees C. So I had to go out and buy another thermometer and I went for a Grillman barbecue thermometer and it's got a foldable, foldable probe and it measures down to minus 50 degrees C and all the way up to 150 degrees C. So we're well and truly covered for temperature checks. Anyway, let's go and find some um, compositions, shots to do some landscape photography. Uh, the weather has just turned again, it's raining. 
So we'll see what happens, probably shoot from the car. Let's go for a drive. So I've just found my first shot. I've had to pull over on the side of the road. It's a bit sketchy. The car's on a bit of an angle, um, but I've just seen this shot off in the distance. There's a mountain. It's got all this mood and atmosphere around it, and there's a path that runs through the paddocks. So I'm quickly gonna grab that shot with my 150 millimeter lens, and I've got a orange filter on the front. So I've bumped up the com exposure compensation by two stops. So let's go and grab this shot and then go and find another one. So I've just reached this hilltop, uh, kind of got, I'm quite high up and I can see off into the distance down into a bit of a valley and there's all these farmers fields and trees and fences and hedging and it's quite a lot of moody atmosphere off in the distance uh, from, the, from the bad weather. So I'm just gonna get out my car and go and stand up on a little high point here and take a shot off down into the distance. So that's it, 12 shots done, got a bit wet. It was quite cool, I was just driving around and um, picking out areas of the landscape where there was break in the cloud and there's some nice light shining through and there was a bit of atmosphere. Most of my shots were done with my 150 millimeter lens and the last shot here, my 12th shot was with my 75 millimeter lens. The 150 millimeter lens had an orange filter on it and the 75 millimeter had a yellow filter so we're going to head back home now and get stuck into some film developing. Hopefully it all goes well. Okay, so we're back. We had lots of fun shooting film. Now the next test is getting this film in this canister using this light bag without exposing it to light. And I've never done it before. So we're going to do a test roll first. Just want to quickly apologize as well for the um, movement and noise in the background. The guys are working on my house, finishing it off. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you won't be able to hear that because I've got my lav mic on. So I've got a test roll here and we need to get it onto the reel, which sits in here. This is a Patterson tank. Haven't used one of these before. So we're going to have to try and figure that out. It flips and pulls out. And there are two rolls in here and it, I believe it's got some... Um, Got some information on the bottom of the tank. It's got some fluid volume information for the film that we're going to be using. So for 35 millimeter or 26 or 126 millimeter is 290 milliliters or 10 ounces. 127 millimeter is 370 milliliters or 13 ounces. 120 or 220, and we've shot 120. So it's 500 milliliters or 17 and a half ounces. So that's the tank. These are the reels. You get two, there's obviously 35. And I believe that these, oh, there we go. So they extend. Got no idea how to use these. So there must be a way of locking it into medium format mode, I believe. That must be it there. Yeah, that looks right. So you have to turn them clockwise together. Turn them clockwise together and pull it out. And there's like a little latch. And then you just turn anti-clockwise and that locks them in position. And then we can push that in. And then once we've got that in the tank in here, and we put the lid on, and we can put it into place. And it's got this little stirrer thing. That can be used for turning it. Okay, so we've got the film reels set up to the way we want them. Now we need to try and Get the film on there. So this is my test roll. I'm just going to open it. So this is how I would have to open it in the change bag. Just somehow scratch off. The film keeper. And then I suspect that we unroll it.
and the film comes off on the back side. There's this bit here. And I've got a tip from Paul C. Smith. He said, trim the edges of your of your film so it doesn't get stuck. Now somehow this okay. So it feeds in there. So we need to that's not easy. <laughs> Okay. So it seems to be going in, it's just pulling itself in. You just rotate it and it just pulls it on. We've reached the end of the film, I think. Yep. And we will just snip that off. Is that the end? Yep. So that just rips off. And we just cut that off. Leave it in there. So that's it. And then we'll have to put it in there. And then lock it in. And then it's ready to go. <laughs> now we just need to do that inside the bag. And we can't even see what we're doing. <laughs> My first reel of film loaded. Thank you, Paul C. Smith, for your tip on chamfering the edges. I think that definitely helps. I've got my developer here, so I'm going to give it a stir. Pour this in here. So now we are going to empty this tank, if I can get the lid off. That's it. I'm going to put the chemicals in my chemical bucket. And then, as per recommendation from my friend Martin, we're going to pour in some 20 degrees water and let it stand on that for two minutes. And apparently that helps the shadows a little bit. Gives it a bit more of an even spread. And we'll just rotate and agitate for this. One minute's over, another agitation. A couple of rolls. So that's two minutes over, so we'll empty that out. Time for the stop bath. Give that a bit of a stir. One minute and agitation. So we will set the timer off. And for this agitation, we're just going to use this because it takes, we'll just slowly rotate that. So that's one minute done. We'll pull this back in this jug so we can actually save this. We'll so, stop and then we're going to pour this into our little canister so we can save this and use it next time. And now it's time for the fixer and I just need to check the times. And we are three minutes and agitate for 10 seconds at the beginning of every minute. Give the fixer a stir. Smells of vinegar. We'll pour that in. Start the timer and we'll just agitate now for 10 seconds. 
So that's it. The fixer's finished, we're going to pour that back into this jug. And then we're going to pour that into the brown bottle because we can reuse this. Okay, so now we're just going to run some water through the tank. Just put some water in the tank to wash the film off and then we should be good to go. This is the wetting agent, improve the drying. So we'll just do this for a minute or two. Just agitate it. And that's that, we're going to pour that in the bucket. I don't believe the wetting agent is reusable, but if you've got any different opinion about that, I'd really like to know, so leave a comment down below. Is the Ilford wetting agent uh, reusable? So the moment of truth, has the development worked? Well, I've unlocked the tank. We're pulling it out. Give it a rinse. And we'll pull the film out. And it looks like there are exposures on there. Let's give it another bit of a rinse. Take out this tube. Do we have any images on this film? <laughs> and we do. We definitely have images. Definitely have images. I'll tell you what, I'll give these, I've got a squeegee device. I'm just gently applying pressure on this, just to get as much water off as possible. I think that's about it. I'll tell you what, I'll hang them up and then I'll get the camera up and close, up close to them. I don't have any film clips. So what I'm using is some paper clips for now until I can get some proper clips. Although the paper clips don't seem to hold it. Yeah, yeah, they do. Okay, let's hang it up, let's dry it off and then we'll cut these up and scan them and yeah, we'll see what they look like. So these are the images. Let's bring them up. We'll have a proper look on a light table in a minute and you'll get to see the scans. Looks like there's lots of density there. There's definitely, there's definitely images on these. So, so far, it looks like it's been fairly successful. There's definitely images on these. Let's let them dry off and then we'll cut them up and get them on the flatbed scanner and scan them and then we'll have a look at some images and see what they look like.
So I really hope you enjoyed that video and you found it useful. Yeah, just to recap on what we did, um, went out to shoot some Kodak Tri-X 400, uh, did that with mainly with my 150 millimeter lens and an orange filter with two stops of exposure compensation. And there was one shot right at the end with my 75 millimeter uh, lens and a yellow uh, filter with one stop of exposure compensation added on. We then came home and we developed the film using Ilford Tech DDX using the stand development process, which was um, 45 minutes of stand development with agitation at the start and then agitation halfway through. We then rinsed uh, with, two, with, with water for two minutes and then we um, stopped the process and then we fixed it and then we ran some washing agent through. And yeah, let me know what you thought of the, the process. If you've got any more tips that you think I should know about, then please let me know about them in the comments down below, leave a comment. And let me know what you think about the images, what you liked about them. Do you like the contrast, the sharpness? And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope to see you next time. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. If you really like the video, give it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Bye for now. Have a great week. See you soon.